episode two of Morning Lumber Gaming Podcast. My name is BMAC, and today we got my buddy Gooner with us, and uh, we're going to talk a little Modern Warfare 2. Gooner, how are you doing today? Good, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing good, as always. Good. So, how are you liking Modern Warfare 2 so far? Well, honestly, I love it. I think it has so much potential. I think that... Um... The bugs are obviously a downer for some more than others. Um, I didn't have hardly any crashes until the most recent update. So that's probably, across the board, people's frustrations. But the map, everything, like, this has so much potential. It reminds me of the old CODs. 100%. And I can agree with you on those, uh, those errors and crashing. Nothing is yeah. worse than being in DMZ. Now, especially <laughs> since you have that exfil streak... Imagine losing that streak just because you crashed. I would probably lose my mind. Yeah. But I can definitely agree with that. That is definitely the most frustrating part of the game so far. Mm -hmm. um, so what <laughs> game modes have you mostly been playing? Um, Warzone for the most part and DMZ. <coughs> Excuse me. DMZ lately. Um, really kind of fall in love with, fallen in love with that mode. Um, but I'm a Warzone player by heart. So... Yeah, 100%. I mean, the Warzone alone is... I think it reminds me a lot of Verdansk and a lot of Blackout, um, which I I loved. I Blackout was the one that definitely turned me on to Battle Royales. I never played Fortnite before I played any other Battle Royale, so it was, it was definitely cool to kind of have that Battle Royale that really kind of makes you excited again to really play the game. Um... And I think it's a definitely a turn for the best for Call of Duty, even though I feel like a lot of streamers kind of dislike the game so far. I'm not I'm not sure why. Some of the real popular ones dislike it. Why do you why do you think that is? So I think first of all, it's 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 a tough game. Um, it's a tough game in general, but I think it's um, it's it's hard to explain it there's a smaller skill gap for sure um you can't just kill somebody by slide canceling past them and turning around and killing them before they can turn their xbox 360 or xbox <laughs> series x controller around um so it's definitely more about gunplay uh it's more about controlling recoil and now that everybody has the same fov you know you don't have to worry about uh recoil or at least visual recoil anymore um so it's a lot more level playing field um that's not to say there isn't a skill gap there's clearly a skill gap but um you can't pub stomp you can't pub stomp like you could before and i think that's true with multiplayer as well i think it's just an across the board adjustment that people have to make it's more it's more old cod like i said like I I know me personally, I got so many kills in Warzone 1 just because of my movement. And that's that's made me actually use the firing range and tune my attachments and make sure I have the best recoil I can. Um, so yeah, I think it's a more level playing field. I definitely agree with that. I think it, it definitely evens the playing field being able to, you know, not be finessed by some of these guys that were all about movement, especially with Warzone 1, you'd see people that are slide canceling in and out of a room, downing someone, sliding back in, slide back out, finish them off, yep. go back in, and you could see someone literally wipe out an entire team of four with, like, literally no effort just because people are just getting... They're too slow to move or they don't know how to approach that kind of movement and things like that. So I definitely agree with you on that end. Um... Another big thing, I think, like you were kind of saying, you know, the FOV definitely makes it a lot nicer that everybody kind of has that slider so they can easily get that full yeah. know, range of the game. Because even when we were doing the raid last night, I, you know, I was even getting a little frustrated because my normal 120 FOV was getting taken down to like 80, 90, yeah. somewhere yeah. in that range. And I found it just overly weird and uncomfortable to look at. <laughs> this is very strange. Yeah. But, I mean, imagine being, like, a console player and being stuck with that. And then you have PC players that have that full FOV. It, it's definitely a big game changer for a lot of people. Um, oh, for sure. I definitely think yeah. this game mode is a lot more, or this game in general is a lot more, you know, group-based rather than being one of those guys that can 
solo an entire lobby by himself. And I think that's a big advantage, um, especially for, you know, teams that work really well together and, you know, you learn to play with that other team and, you know, really be able to kind of like know what your teammates are going to do before you even ask. Right. And I think that's a big thing. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying the game. It's, I, I love it so far. I think it's a great game. Um, so what's your go-to gun been so far since you've been playing? Uh, the RPK. Um, but re- I just now got on the Finnick bandwagon. <laughs> so the Finnick is up there too, but I think the RPK, generally speaking, let me ask you this on Warzone one, going back to what you said before, um, how often did you one V four people? Never. I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, I mean, like you said, slide canceling in and out of buildings, you could 1v4 a team and wipe them. And this one, it's just, it's night and day different, dude. If you're going to, first of all, 1v4ing a team is like major kudos if you can do it. But you're shooting them at range, you're behind a wall, and you're far enough away to where their team can't come at you from all angles. Like, it's, it's just played so much differently, bro. I agree with that. And yeah, it's... I think it needs to be a learning curve for a lot of people. And I don't think streamers and stuff like that, you know, the the really, you know, streamers with the big following are really going to throw it and throw in the towel in this game already. I just find it so odd because you have to think about, like, a lot of their fan base is really going to be geared a lot more towards Call of Duty. And for them to follow another streamer, I think it's going to be um, a little easier to find someone that you can kind of go to rather than end up watching a game like Tarkov that might not everyone not might be like really appealed to or something like that but I okay. saw a, I saw a video by Z Laner he put out yesterday I believe on YouTube and he was playing with Huskers and Iceman Isaac and anybody that knows Warzone probably knows those names and <laughs> Z was just kind of shitting on the game a little bit talking about how many crashes there were and whatever and while he was talking in his video I think Iceman Isaac crashed four times <laughs> while they were playing. So it's just like, and these are guys that, you know, they went out to LA and they tested the game. They were invited and all hyped up. They actually talked to the devs. The devs didn't listen. I, I don't know. I don't know what their priorities are, but it's not fixing bugs. It's not fixing crashes. It's, you know, if there is a bug that there's an XP glitch affected, you <laughs> By God, by all means, like, let's patch it in two hours. But, (laughs) so, if it has anything to do with people, like, exploiting XP so they don't play the game as long, they'll get it fixed. So, that's my one big gripe with them, is, um, like, there there was a, a money glitch on Warzone and DMZ where you could equip the gun you want to level up, you could buy a bunch of plates that are... What, $400 a piece? Yep. And you could uh, just buy infinite number of plates at the buy station, and they never ran out, and you could walk out of there with like 80,000 XP, 90,000 XP, and damn near level your gun up just buying plates. But that lasted for two hours. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> to think that. Did it, you do, yeah. Did you try the glitch? I, it was already patched. It was patched before I could try it. I wasn't done working. Um, so if they can do that, if they really wanted to, if they really put their mind to it, um, they could fix all these crashes. I got I'm lucky. Just, uh, I'm convinced of that. I got lucky enough that I actually killed someone that had the money glitch. So as soon as I picked their bag, you know, it automatically just dumped all that money back into mine, and I was like, "Oh, perfect." Yeah. You know, let me just go <laughs> start buying stuff. So. Yeah, I got lucky enough that I got I was able to get away with that. Help me level up a shotgun quicker than normal, which I guess is good. But yeah, um, cool. Um, what's your thoughts on DMZ so far? I love it. So I'm I've always been fascinated with Tarkov. I watched Doctor Lupo a lot on YouTube, and I watched him on Twitch as well. Uh, play Tarkov, and I'm not a mouse and key player, um, so I never got to really dive into it. But I love that they kind of mirrored Tarkov in a lot of ways. Um, 
it's not the same game. It's not as complex, but I love the mission base, the mission aspect. Once I started focusing on those, it's it's gotten a lot more enjoyable for me, and especially with this Building 21 stuff. Uh, and rumors of, like, exclusive skins coming to DMZ. These are things that I was hoping would come to DMZ. Um, I hope that there's guns down the line that you can only unlock in DMZ. Like, the more exclusives to DMZ that they have to kind of reward the DMZ player, I think, the better. Um, it's great for leveling up guns if you don't like playing multiplayer, which I do half days and I don't half days, so... Like, when I don't want to play multiplayer, I want to be able to go to DMZ and level up a gun. I wish that it was easier to do the same thing with camos. Like, I wish you could... I don't know why there's AI, and there's so strong AI, so many AI in, in this game, but I wish that that counted towards camos. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely agree with that. It's nice having a game where you have different game modes that can keep you interested you know, for a prolonged period of time. Because even in the last Warzone, whenever Caldera first came out, I played it, I hated it, I despised Caldera. It was one of, like, my least favorite maps they've came out with in a long time. And even with Fortune's Keep, it couldn't hold my interest very long. I, I didn't like that. It was very campy. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, it was, it felt like the same, like, irritating parts of the game. It was just on a more on a game mode where you, you could just camp and do good. And yeah. it was a little irritating for me, but um, I do like the fact that, you know, if you get bored of playing Warzone in this game, you have DMZ. If you get bored of DMZ and War, uh, and the Battle Royale, you have multiplayer. And you can sit there, you can grind skins, you get bored of that, go do something else. It's, it's the raid. Like exactly. I mean, yeah. there's so much stuff to do. It's It's... It's actually kind of refreshing, and it makes me want to play even more. And I think that's something that they've been missing for a while. It was just, like, you know, stuff to keep it interesting. Like, multiplayer's always been fun for Call of Duty, and that's been Call of Duty's, you know, flagship game mode for, you know, X amount of years. I, I You know, even going back to Call of Duty 1, it was mostly multiplayer. You yeah. Know? And that was, that was its go-to game mode. And now, you know, things have changed and more people are more geared towards battle royales than they are multiplayer. Um, but um, I think it's nice and it's refreshing to kind of have different game modes to keep you doing something different as you see necessary. But um, any other guns you're using besides the RPK? Um, the AK? Uh, or the... Uh, is it the stats knob or whatever it is? The... Um... 762? Yes, seven six two for the AK. Nice. Um, or cast off, cast off seven six two. That's the AK. Yep. Um, so as long as you can handle recoil, that gun is amazing. Um, it, it's definitely harder to use than the RPG. Uh, so I tend to lean, even though I can handle the AK, I tend to lean uh, to the RPK. I keep wanting to say RPG, <laughs> um, because it is just the ease of use. Um, and I like the amount of rounds that you get. I, everything about that gun I love. Yeah. But, so they'll probably patch it soon. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. They'll probably just up the recoil to the point it's unusable. But, right. Um, so if you had to rank all the Battle Royale maps so far, uh, let's see, we got Blackout, uh, mm -hmm. Verdansk, uh, Rebirth, uh, Caldera, Fortune's Keep, and Almazra. Am I missing one? Oh, you're putting uh, Fortune's Keep and, and Rebirth in there, too. Yeah, I would throw those in. Wh wh how would you rank those? Like, which okay. one are your favorite so far? Um, so my favorite map is honestly Almazra. Um, I have to put Blackout at the bottom because I never played it. Um, or when I did play it, it was one or two times and it was way past its prime. Nobody played but Hackers. Yep. Um... Honestly, kind of surprising a little bit. So I'll put Almazra up top. <laughs> Caldera and Verdansk are very close second and thirds for me. Um, I like BR maps in general better than the smaller maps. But I'll probably put Verdansk 2 and a very close third to Caldera. Um, I wasn't a huge... I wasn't the biggest fan of Caldera. That's why it's last on my BR list. Um... 
just because I think they made a mistake putting Peak in the middle. But if you, <laughs> I swear, like if you put if you took Peak and put it out to the side and you didn't put it in the middle, that changes that map so much. Yep. And that map had so much potential. Um, Verdansk, most people probably put that as their number one, but the way that I remember Verdansk, of course, I have great memories. But Verdansk was very campy. It was very rooftopy, and <laughs> like you had so many rats in Verdansk, and people tend to forget that. Yep. Um, I think you do have that sometimes in Almazra. Clearly, there are high points, but it's just. Like like we talked about for the sk the skill gap being closer together, it's not as big of a deal. And then um, fortunes keep would be after Caldera, and then rebirth. Nice. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a good ranking. I know Caldera is probably Caldera and fortunes keep are definitely at the bottom for me. Blackout, I I you know it sucks you didn't really get a chance to play that because that one, I just thought the playability to that was just awesome how they did oh that. everybody says great things about it i just i can't really rate it if i didn't play it yeah it sucks but <laughs> either way um so um let's see what are your thoughts on the warzone cup um it definitely seems like a rocket rocket league ripoff um do you think they're going to do this to any other games i mean what were your thoughts on that game mode so <laughs> for the gimmick that it is i enjoyed it i think but it's not, I mean, it's not something I'm going to grind. It's something that I play. It's like, oh, this is funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's, it is a direct ripoff from Rocket League with minus, you know, the flying through the air. Um, I, I love Rocket League to begin with. But um, I think for the gimmick and the World Cup thing, it's funny. But I enjoyed it. Um, I think that they're going to do that for more games for sure. I think they will too. Um it almost kind of reminds me of like one of those like little side game modes you could play in Cold War, you know, like that one. I think it was it wasn't a multiplayer map. It was something in the campaign, and I think like you could go in and you could do like some of like the little arcade games that were in there. Do you Black Ops? That? Yeah, Black, Black Ops. Ops. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me a lot of that. You know how it has like some weird side game you can kind of play. Like, and I even think they they had that in Black Ops. One, two, it was two or three. I can't remember, but yeah, I remember it. You were on like a almost like a three D map, and you could use uh, your joystick kind of like Galaga and just like spin around and shoot people and get gold and jewels and things like that. Yeah, I definitely remember that. Uh, I think it was just called Black Ops Arcade. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. That's what it was. But um, yeah, I, I thought those were cool too. At the same time, so cool. Um, let's see here. Um, so I know we didn't get to complete the raid. Um, I won't, <laughs> I won't bring up why. Uh, but anywho, what did you, what did you think of it so far? At least from how far you gotten inside of the actual raid itself? Yeah. So, um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit kind of disappointed. I enjoyed it. Um, Coming from, I was a big Destiny player for two years before they ripped the rug out from underneath us and started a new game when they said they wouldn't, but I'm not better. Um, <laughs> but raids, <laughs> raid, uh, raids have always been really fun for me because there are, I mean, it takes teamwork, it's frustrating, but once you figure it out, like, it's actually fun to do. Um, the reason I'm disappointed a little bit is, I mean... I don't think you can put Destiny raids and Call of Duty raids in the same stratosphere. But as far as difficulty, it it really... Like, enemies are tougher, but there's no bosses. Like, there's juggernauts, but there's no bosses, um, if that makes sense. it's um, It wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. Uh, granted, we didn't finish it, for reasons we won't speak about, uh, Pete. But... <laughs> 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 but uh no i'm kidding but yeah i enjoyed it for what it is i hope the loot is worth it and this is episode one hopefully that means there's going to be several more hopefully the puzzles get more intricate uh once you figured out the puzzles really aren't that difficult i, I wouldn't say 
it's not the puzzles that are difficult to figure out. I think it's just the time constraints make it a little difficult, and that's that's really it. Wasn't yeah, anything super crazy. I just find it a little weird to believe that people are doing this in twenty some minutes. That's that's like, I think twenty one was uh, the, the I, record I saw. I think we can do that though. I really do. So once we figured out that you can uh, like, you know, minimize your callouts and only talk when it's important, like, um, I I think that is going to be huge. I think we could do a sub 20, 21, 22 minute run. I really do. Yeah, it would definitely be, I think it would be a couple tries. I think it'd be a couple tries, but I think like running through it the first couple times and just kind of learning the mechanics of that raid and figuring out where to go, what people to take down first, I think it would make it super easy. Yeah. Um, oh, and I use the sentry gun. I mean, now it makes sense why I shouldn't have used it, but it might have made things probably much easier. But <laughs> at least, at least, it would have been somewhat like having a third person there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> my my thoughts exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pete. <laughs> um. All right. So, last question for you. Um, yeah. We haven't played Building Twenty One yet. Do you have any strategies uh, going into this that you think you want to try first? Like, I'm I'm big on sniping with DMZ. That every time I load in there, I load in with a signal and usually some kind of close range weapon. But I think it's going to be a little bit different. And I'm thinking maybe the RPK might be the best be, best to bring in, or oh. maybe one of the Rawls, maybe the Raw Dog, but. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? So, um, breaking news, full disclosure, I tried it. I tried building 21 on my stream today. Um, so, I know we were reading about it before, and we needed, we knew we needed to get those blue and red key cards, which we didn't have. I saw those rooms. Um, it's very confusing. It. We need to get multiple more building 21 cards, because we're going to have to try it timer it started at like 11 or 12 minutes something like that and um clearly i don't know if it was it doesn't tell you why um you don't have a map it takes away your map immediately so you can't look at the map to see where to go um there are players in there the ai are shoot you once and they take off all your plates um you don't know why the timer is counting down though um there's multiple floors um, I wish I knew if we had to defuse something or kill somebody before the timer ran out or if that's how much time we have to exfil. I don't know. There's a lot of unknowns. I think you need to go in there prepared with a bunch of key cards. Because, and, but then we have to figure out how to exfil. Um, so I don't know, dude. How long I, do they give you with the timer? I want to say it was like 11 or 12 minutes. It wasn't long. It could have been... It could have been 15 minutes, but I don't think so. I remember looking up and seeing 11. Did your timer run out? Um, no, we ran into an enemy squad. I think the second one we ran into, we got smashed by. Hmm. I wonder if that's the X-Fell timer. Yeah, I don't know. I think you go in there for sure. Like, Make sure you have your three-plate vest from DMZ. Uh, make sure you have a self revive kit. Like, make sure you know your essentials are covered, and you go in there with uh, your custom gun and maybe even two other five star guns. I don't know, or five attachment guns. What um, <sighs> let's see, what else? Uh, what else am I missing here? Oh, do you lose your key card that you use to get in? Do you lose yeah. that? Uh, wow, that's uh. That's yeah. going to be a little bit of a struggle because when we were playing DMZ last night, we got lucky. We ran into like I grabbed one of the key cards, but yeah. the thing was, I don't remember seeing any after that. Do you? No, um, but the Sam sites. If you shoot down the care packages, apparently that's a really good way to get it. I know we tried it once and it was unsuccessful, um, but I think we found a good place with that El Bagra underground. Um, I need to do a better job at checking the guards because the guards can easily drop them. Hmm. Or I say easily. Um, yeah, what's, what's frustrating, and 
I might have extracted with it or not. I found a blue key card. Um, <laughs> I forgot exactly what it was called, but it was a blue key card, and I can't remember if I extracted. I think I did extract with it. So next next time we go in, I do have a blue key card. Who'd you run building twenty one with? Uh, Zilla, Zilla official um, was a streamer, not a streamer, just a friend, and uh, Pearl. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Uh, how long till you guys died? Hmm. Probably like seven or eight minutes. Um, did you, were you guys getting down pretty quickly from the AI? I know they were taking plates off, but you guys weren't getting destroyed by them, were you? No, I mean, they took our plates. I mean, we're all pretty good at getting the cover. Um, so they would take our plates and we'd just get into cover. I think we all went down maybe once or twice each before we went down for good. Got it. Yeah. Uh, doing it a second time, what gun would you be taking in? Definitely, I'm going to take my RPK back in. For sure. Uh, maybe even, I want to say a shotgun, but those enemies are so strong, I don't want to be that close quarters either. Um, I don't think there's a reason to take a gas mask. I'm trying to think, like, there's got to be, there's got to be some strategy that we're missing, but I think the biggest thing, honestly, is those key cards, because there's a lot of opportunity to get into rooms that you can't get on. Cool. Oh. All right. Some good info. Yeah. At least, at least people know what they're in for <laughs> before they load into that. I know... I think you're the only person I know that's went in there so far, so. Yeah, go back and watch it, dude. It's super interesting. Like, it's, like, we're panicking the whole time because we don't know what to do. <laughs> like I said, that, that counter starts going down, and you're like, what? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> well, cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today, and uh, thanks for the time. Um, maybe we can get you back on here and we can kind of go through uh, maybe some other stuff we found in building 21 and maybe we can throw up some footage and all that good stuff. Absolutely, dude. No, I appreciate you having me on. This is great. Awesome. Well, all right. Happy to do it. Guys, thanks for chilling with us and uh, we'll catch you on episode three, which should be on next Tuesday. Catch you guys Sounds later. Sounds good. Later, guys.